Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Hideous Thoughts here coming at you with another Black Desert Online video for console. In today's video, we're going to be talking about different streams of income that you can use in Black Desert to help you accumulate wealth. Now, I'm going to, we're going to go over the examples of the different types of income. I'm going to give you some ideas about things that you can do. I'm not going to go ahead and say you need to make this and this to, to create, to get rich because the thing is, it, everything changes. With any economy, nothing stays the same forever, so it's always changing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and educate you on the different streams of income, the different ways that you can make money, and hopefully change your mindset about how you view the game, how you view the activities that you're doing, how you can maybe reassess the time that you're spending in the game, and you're using your time more efficiently to create wealth because at the end of the day the, the the game revolves around wealth it revolves around silver you need silver to do absolutely everything in the game upgrading your gear so that you can grind higher areas to make more money or just achieve different things in the game if you want to do pvp or if you just want um to create silver so that you can get ships or you, you can buy different outfits on the central market or however you want to play the game everything revolves around silver there's no way around it so if you guys can learn how to change your mindset on how to make money in the game, then these things are going to help you over time. All right, guys. So if this video helps you out, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Every interaction really helps getting past YouTube's algorithm. And I need your guys' support to help push these videos out to more Black Desert console players like yourself. I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my recent subs and all just all of my subs and followers and supporters. Um, we're almost at 500, guys. We're five away from 500, which is absolutely incredible. We are on our way to 1,000. The goal is 1,000, but we're almost at 500, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. You are all amazing. Guys, if you want to see me live stream, you can head on over to twitch.tv slash hideous thoughts. I stream a variety of different games, but I do stream Black Desert two or three times a week. So you can come over and ask me questions live on stream. And you can also join my Discord where you can come and chat with me on Discord, meet other Black Desert players, and even help vote on the games we play on stream. All right, guys, but without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, now, so there's four different types of income. I used to say that there was three, but there's actually four. Really, if you kind of think about it, there's four. Now, these are passive, semi-passive, AFK, and active income. Now, the way that we play the game ideally should be dictated around these four different types of income because ultimately, everything that we do in the game should be revolved around making money and progressing. If we're not making money, we can't progress. It's as simple as that. You you can do different things in the game. Sure, absolutely. Maybe your goal isn't to get a high gear score. Maybe your goal is just to have fun, ride around on your horse all day, look at the sunsets, maybe collect some knowledge and, uh, and, and do all different types of uh, knowledge hunting and unlocking the extra kind of extracurriculum things in the game. Maybe that's your goal. But for the majority of players, I'm going to say 95% of players, their goal is to make some form of progression in the game. Maybe even more, maybe even 98%. Okay, The goal is to make some form of progression in the game. And that requires silver, no matter how you look at it. Okay, so let's talk about the first one. The first one is passive income. Now, what passive income is, is passive income is uh, a, a sort of income that you can where you do a task once and you make money from it over and over and over again. So the most common form of passive income comes down to your nodes. Now, if we take a look at the world map, we're going to see a bunch of nodes here all around. See, all these circles are nodes. Now, I'm not going to get into detail on this because I've already done a video on setting up a worker empire, setting up a node network, and doing all that sort of stuff. So if you guys want to uh, check that out, you're more than welcome to. I'll link that in the in the top corner right now. So essentially, these are a node, and you can have workers on here, and the workers will go 
spend however long it would take for a particular node to uh, to to do one cycle and then what it would do is it would put that resource into your storage for, for whatever town or city that you have that connected to and then you would have something that looks like this over time you would collect all of these resources now what you can do with these resources is now this is really important as well because the way that you set up your node network ideally needs to be related to what you plan on doing with your semi-passive afk and active incomes so you've got to kind of think about this and plan it out because for example let's say that you want to uh, make beer right let's say that in your uh, semi-passive which is when when you're kind of in the game but you're not really in the game you're doing other things okay uh, your semi-passive or your AFK income would be, let's say you want to make some beer. So we know that beer needs uh, some kind of starch to make it. And the starches are wheat, corn. Uh, what else What else have we got here? We've got uh, barley and there was another one as well, potatoes. Okay, so we know we need potatoes, wheat, barley and corn. They're the, the starches that you need to make a beer. So let's say we come up to this website here, something lovely. We type in corn. Okay, so we can have a look at the different corn, corn nodes. So we, we, we look here, uh, Velia and Hyde will probably be the most, the, the, the best ones you want to look at. There is these ones here in Duvencroon, but to be honest, they're very expensive for contribution points. So uh, you want to, I would say if you're looking at corn nodes, the ones around Velia and Hyde are going to be the ones that you want, you're going to want to look at. All right, so we've got here Tuscany Farm has two corn nodes. So what we can do is we can have a worker or two workers on here for each of those nodes and we can uh, we can passively collect those corn nodes, right? What we can then do is we can use that to funnel it into our kitchens where we can make beer. And we can do the same with the wheat, the barley and the potatoes. I wouldn't recommend just relying on one source of starch if you're making beer because you use it up pretty quickly and one node isn't enough to sustain a large kind of supply of beer so you really need to pay attention to this this is just one example you really need to pay attention to this and set up your set up your nodes in a way that you're going to use them either for pure passive income where you literally just get everything in your storage and you sell it straight away onto the central market for pure passive income or you want to funnel this these items into your other income streams which would be your AFK or your semi passive or your active income okay so for example Alejandro farm is a, got a cooking honey node and then the cooking honey you can use that to make the sweet honey wine and things like this okay things that you can sell for a lot of silver so you got to kind of be careful and, and kind of be a little bit smart with how you're setting up your node uh, network now if we take a look at my node network for example i've got a whole bunch of things going all over the place i've got 350 plus contribution points and i've got kind kind of things going on everywhere but everything kind of plays a purpose okay so for example if we look um, if we look here we've got uh, the maple timber now the maple timber node I've got going on here I'm getting this for the uh, the maple sap the other next one up here at Lynch farm ruins this is the only node in the game that gives fleece now you use fleece to make wool and wool is one of the land items that you use for bartering. So I, I have changed this around a little bit and I have a lot of my nodes set up for now uh, for bartering in a way that I can use these to supply my land items in that way that it minimizes my expenses and things that I need to uh, buy off the central market. So we've got things all the way up here. Um, in Altanova and I've got this node network coming up here into uh, like for example the ancient uh, excavation site this is mostly trash but it gives you an item called trace of chaos 
and the trace of chaos is used to make things like uh, crescent guardian rings which you can make them relatively easy and you can sell them on the central market or you can enhance them and sell them for profit so everything has a purpose all the way up here i've got these two uh see the white cedar timber and the maple timber and i've got these because of the saps that i'm getting uh saps are in really high demand right now so i i kind of cr created my nerd network to to feed the the demand for certain items on the marketplace so what you want to do is you want to kind of get an understanding of what is in demand and a lot of the times you can easily figure that out by what events are going on in the game or what uh what new content has been released for the game so for example we've just had ships new ships put into the game so what you can do is you can look at what are the resources required to make those ships and uh and, and i guarantee you if you look at the marketplace and you look at those resources they're all going to be out of stock every time that some kind of horse event comes into the game or uh, we get a new horse i can guarantee you that wagons are going to be in high demand because wagons are used to train horses so for example right now we have a uh, an event in the game for training training horses so if we look at wagons let's go and take a look right now we'll come down here to to wagons and we're going to look at the merchant wagons right so 26 there's 26 in the marketplace and uh these these will fluctuate these are going to go the price will go up between five six million per wagon and this is a good way that you can make profit by uh, getting some workshops going which is a semi-passive income because essentially the workers are doing the work for you and you're just providing the resources and selling it on the central market so everything comes down to with your nodes and your passive income knowing what is in demand what you can make the most money on and then creating your node network to fit the specific kind of uh to fit the purpose that you need it to do so that's what passive income is it's basically creating a node network getting workers to collect a bunch of resources and selling them on the central market for pure silver gains okay now the next type of income is obviously semi-passive, which we just kind of little went a little bit over. But uh, semi-passive income, this is a task that allows you to do minimal work while still giving you some sort of silver return. These can be things like imperial cooking, bartering, crate trading, and the golden child of semi-passive income is farming. Now I love farming and I you know what when i first started playing the game i tried to do far farming and i hated it but uh that was mostly because i didn't understand how to do it properly and uh farming is amazing because essentially once you reach artisan 2 in farming if you don't know how to get to artisan farming you can check out the video i did on how to get to artisan 1 farming uh i'll leave that in the top description in the top of this video right now you can have a look at that but farming is amazing because it really it only requires your effort for five minutes every two or so hours with really good profits that come from seeds uh, or harvests you also can make stone tail fodders that you can sell and the recently introduced moles and the moles are really good because you're going to drop black stones and these dream horse procs that you can uh, sell for uh one two three million silver each and so you're going to get all these these different ways farming you can make tens of millions of silver a day with like i said five minutes work every two two and a half hours something like that so let's say if you were able to do your farms five times a day over a, a 12 hour period five minutes just pulling up your seeds replanting them and that's it that's all you need to do this could net you anywhere from 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 million silver a day. Depending on the price of stone tail fodders, it could even be more. And uh, it's just a, a really good way to make semi-passive income. Once you reach artisan, you can put workers on there. So the workers will take care of 
um, all of the the pruning of the the crops and getting rid of the bugs and all that sort of stuff so that your crops can grow fast and without issues the downside to farming is it is a little bit contribution point heavy requires 100 contribution points to get your 10 farms plus the extra contribution points to put the workers on the 10 farms so you're looking at around 110 contribution points for for uh 10 crops 10 farms okay and now that bartering is in and imperial cooking is more profitable certain things like garlics and a variety of mushrooms have also become more profitable so you don't even need to really do the breeding of the seeds you can do the actual harvesting and you can collect the mushrooms and you can sell the mushrooms on the central market and depending on the seeds that you are planting it might even be more profitable now to do the harvesting instead of uh, breeding the seeds and selling the seeds to the central to selling the seeds to a vendor because let's say for example with the, the seeds that i do the hump mushrooms well these sell for around 260,000 silver each to the to the npc but you might be able to make more than that depending on what's available in the central market what's in demand what mushrooms you can breed what mushrooms you can harvest and how often you can harvest them so farming is something that i recommend everyone do because it requires such little work and it's a really good way just to make that extra silver even if you made 50 million silver a day from it that's still 50 million silver that you wouldn't have if you weren't doing this now the other things like imperial cooking bartering trade creating these are all really great ways to make money as well and they require very little work i mean you can be making your guru boxes while you're working on your computer or doing something like this and then the only kind of effort that you need to do is just hand them into the npc when they've finished bartering you can set your afk course your, your waypoints and you can waypoint from island to island and you only need to really be active when you're handing in the bartering and then setting your waypoint to the next island for example and crate trading is the same you pretty much you can do that afk or semi semi actively while you're doing other things as well but farming is the one thing that i really recommend everyone do especially when they've added in these this whole mole system that drops all these special items that's an extra kind of like three million silver every time you pull up your farms and, and that over the course of a day adds up and over the course of a week it adds up so there's these are all the things that you could look at semi passive income now the next type of income that you want to look at is afk income now afk semi-passive and afk kind of can be the same thing but i'm gonna i i would put them differently because i would class afk income as something that you can be away from your computer or your or your game for a long period of time whereas semi-passive you're gonna need to be kind of there but not there you can be not there and doing other things and then just checking on your game every kind of however long just to keep it going whereas afk income i would say that's something that you can do overnight for example or while you're at work you can set an afk task and then when you come home you can get the whatever you've been doing like fishing for example go and hand in your fish sell your fish make your money so that's what afk income is it's things like fishing or processing for example things that you can do while you're away from the game completely overnight fishing is an amazing way to generate around 10 to 20 million silver from not per night and you're going to get this from selling the relic shards that you get and also from the yellow grade fish or the orange fish now if you're lucky enough to get them so areas in the game like Cama Sylvia, for example. So if we come all the way all the way over here to Grana. Grana has an Imperial Fishing Delivery NPC and there's also one in uh, Duvenkroon. There is another one down here but we haven't unlocked that area yet so there's no point talking about it. But uh, Grana has an Imperial fishing uh npc this is where i do my afk fishing so specifically i like to come over here to tooth fairy cabin 
Um, it, there's there is a bridge, kind of like I think it's around right here, and there's that is a, a safe zone as well. So I can uh, AFK fish there. It's a safe zone. I'm not going to have to worry about getting uh, beaten up by anybody overnight, and I can just AFK fish there, get my yellow grade fish, and I can come back to Grana and I can sell them all. And this will net me anywhere from 10 to 20 million silver per night. Now, processing mats or cooking overnight is another good way for AFK income. So if you've got something like the, let's see, I'll pull out the, I'll show you this item here. It's the, the dark greed. Uh, where is it? It'll be in this storage right here. All right. So you can see the dark spirits greed. Now, if we have a look here, we can see Dark Spirits Greed times 15 gives me a Supreme Cooking Utensil. The Supreme Cooking Utensil is the best cooking utensil in the game. It has a negative cooking time and 5,000 durability. So if you had these Supreme Cooking Utensils, you could cook overnight and then you could use and then you could come on in the morning and you can box up everything into your guru boxes and you can sell it to the Imperial uh, delivery and PC. So that would be a form of AFK income, something that you could do overnight. Processing mats is another thing that you can do overnight. You can process, you can process items overnight, and then you can come in in the morning and you can sell the the items straight away on the central market for silver, or you can then put them into the storage to uh, have your your workshops make crates for you that you can then. Uh, sell to the trading NPC, things like this, right? So AFK income is another way that you would look at making money. Now, I understand that a lot of people don't like leaving their consoles on overnight. Computers are a little bit different. Computers tend to not really, it doesn't really affect them if they're left on overnight. Consoles are a little bit different. But if you are one of the people that likes to leave them on overnight, then AFK income is something that you're going to want to be looking at just to help make that little bit of money. And I know 10 to 20 million silver doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're adding that on top of the passive income that you're getting from your nodes, if you add it on top of the semi-passive income that you're getting from your farms, it all adds up. So it could easily amount to 100, 150 million silver a day without you really even doing anything. Now, the crate trading and the Imperial turn-ins are one of the most profitable ways to make money in the game. And if done correctly, can net you tens and if not hundreds of millions of silver each day. Depending on if you have it all set up correctly and you're doing things properly, there is a lot of money to be made with those sorts of things. And the last income stream or method that I've got for you is your active income. Active income relates to activities that you can do in the game while you're completely active. This is the time that you're spending in the game. These things can include hotspot fishing, grinding for monsters, enhancing for profit, gathering. There's so many different ways that you can actively make money in the game, but it's important to break it down and decide what is most important for you to do while you have your active time, especially if you're limited on game time each day. Grind spots can earn you tens and hundreds of millions of silver per hour depending on your knowledge drop rate, your pets, your buffs, your node levels, the gear and the strength of your character, and of course, your N your RNG. Gathering is one of the best ways to make silver actively, especially if you have a high gathering level, high gathering mastery, and a hedgehog pet. Gathering is one of those tasks that you can do to earn raw silver with things like blackstones, hards and sharps, dream horse procs, cafras etc and of course the the items that you're actually gathering all these things you can sell for easy money on the central market but you can also use the gathering to collect items that you're going to use in your afk your semi-passive activities like your workshops and imperial boxes so you can see how all these things kind of fit together you would have an afk task that you do overnight while you're sleeping or while you're at work um, you've got your, your passive income that's making money for you all day while your workers are working as long as you keep them fed. And your active activities are going to have an impact on what you can do semi-passively as well with uh, processing or cooking or things like this that you can do while you're not really paying attention to the game. So all these things kind of go hand in hand with each other 
And it's important to just do a little bit of planning when you're setting all this up because it's important to remember that you got to use your contribution points wisely to create these different income streams. You don't have enough contribution points to do absolutely everything in the game. I'm at 351 contribution points and I reckon if I had maybe like another 200 contribution points, it would be really, really helpful. But the higher you go now, the the harder it gets to kind of get more. So it's more time consuming getting those contribution points. It's also really important to analyze what you want to do, how profitable it is. Are you enjoying doing it and is it sustainable? You're going to divide your time up into different tasks and choose the things that can make you the most money. Remember that nothing is permanent and like any economy, things are going to change. Eventually, the market will become oversaturated with beer, for example, and you're going to need to swap to something like liquor of essence. Nothing will be a best seller forever. So it requires a little bit of thinking, analyzing the market and just using your brain. You want to see what's low in stock and profitable and what you can make or sell for your silver. With Imperial Turn-In, kind of works a little bit differently. You need to create a plan on how to make the most crates and create the most profit. Obviously, this is done by gathering or processing and making every aspect of that crate or the box from scratch. But if you don't have time to do that, you can work out your cost things to buy the materials on the central market. And then you want to um, take that from your profit and you want to see if it's worth your time or not. Sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't be. So. The four types of income, passive, semi-passive, AFK, and active. If you can implement all these four methods into your game, and then you can maintain or sustain them over time, you're going to, this is the, this is the, the secret recipe to creating wealth. Because instead of you just going and grinding monsters all day, every day, you can have a node network there for you, creating a passive income for extra silver while you're doing it. And a, and a good node network can make you around, what, I don't know, 100 million silver a week, maybe more. Farming guys, I suggest everybody takes a good look at the farming because again, you can sell those seeds to the NPC. You don't pay tax on them. And if you're not looking at making a dream horse um, and you don't need to keep the, the stone tail fodders, then you can sell them on the marketplace for a million, 1.5 million, maybe even 2 million silver depending on the price of the time. So there's a lot of money there for you as well. And then look at your AFK incomes as well so that you can make some money while you're sleeping or at work or something away from the game. So there you go guys, that's a breakdown of the four different types of income. I hope that helps you learn a little bit about or kind of just open your mind up to different ways that you can make money in the game instead of just thinking that you just need to grind monsters all day every day. There are different ways that you can do it, different ways that you can make money and different ways that you can just help yourself get ahead by doing different tasks and uh, using your time a little bit differently to how you might have been. So guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all you guys. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below, but otherwise I will see you in the next one.